in your opinion, what is the most fundamental necessity for any self-improvement? Let's start with John. Mm. On the spot. I think you have to want to like improve. Mm. You have to you have to you have to be aware that there's you know that there's something wrong. Not even if there's not something wrong, but that there's a way that you can better yourself. <laughs> And then I also think you have to love yourself enough to do it. A lot of people get stuck in the mindset, I deserve this, I deserve to be this way. And then it just, it's a downward slope of, you know, self-pity, victimhood, victimization, man. Everyone wants to be the victim. Steve's turning into Yoda. This was a setup question to begin with. Mike. Oh, huh? they just got Buddhist uh, third party Buddha. Uh, well, I was a little vague on this one, but I was saying I kind of had a two part answer. One, discipline slash awareness of the present is what I like to call it. Um, meaning, like those in the moment decisions where you say, do I want to do this or do I want to do you know this when I really realize in the long term that the latter decision is going to make me feel better in the long term. It's going to increase my happiness and mm -hmm. my contribution to society and the world. And, all that. Uh, and the second one is confidence. I think that's actually a big key. Like People overlook it as if you don't believe you can do it, it's going to probably not happen. You know? um, so I think those are the two that I came up with. And I don't know, just I feel like discipline is way too generic and Stereotypical, but I'm just—I don't know. I can't think of a better word right now, so I'm gonna work on that. The one that people typically go with is willpower versus discipline, and I've been listening to an audio book called "Change Anything," and it's all the science behind personal change. And willpower is like the biggest myth on the list. Like it's you're setting yourself up to fail. If you believe discipline and willpower. It's actually all about influencers, the people in your life, people you surround yourself with because we're social animals, uh, your environment, so temptation, but like it takes like a muscle exercise, neurotransmitters, pathways, time, but willpower is like the biggest way to fail. So did you say that was a book you read? Yeah, well, listen to it. Oh, what's yeah. it called? Change Anything. Mm -hmm. And it's it's done. It was all based on the science of changers, and over five thousand people have succeeded. So whether it's addiction, weight loss, uh, relationship problems, you know, anger, they had to be successful for at least three years or longer. Huh. Cool. So and they've broken down a million different ways, studies, but it even got into like. How, how powerful the social aspect is, you know, those studies back uh, at Berkeley where, you know, you shock the person behind the curtain because they didn't answer the questions correct just because somebody's in a lab coat. That is that is how powerful, like, social influence is off the charts huge. And the people in your life, you just all these, but it basically takes a very scientific approach and tools. But you still, my answer would be, you got to have the desire to change. Mm -hmm. You don't have the desire to begin with, <laughs> right? You gotta have motivation inside yourself. Quick question related to that, Maria. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between desire and willpower? Because I'm confused about that. You gotta, you gotta recognize there's a problem. Okay. Right? So, so to me, it's like you want to change. It's at least it's not willpower, but you at least have to have a desire to be better. You see that there's a problem. Like an understanding sort of thing. Yeah, like you realize. That's a, a I segue see. into mine. Perfect. Because mine is awareness. Oh. Because awareness is the first step to any change. Yeah. You need to be aware of something before you can actually work towards it. It's absolutely fundamental. And self improvement, it applies to everything from our physical selves to our mental selves emotional and spiritual selves and awareness pervades the entirety of our being like when you're spiritually aware that's like 
meditation, for example. You, you merge with that peaceful stillness of infinite possibility. That's like the spiritual example. Uh, mentally, you're aware of your thoughts. You know, you're aware of your emotions when they come up. So once you're aware of your thoughts, you're able to reside in the present moment and act from that place of peace instead of getting dragged by the thoughts without even knowing what you're doing. And that's what people fall into because they're not aware of all the crazy thoughts and emotions that are popping up and they're completely identified with it. And if you're completely identified with that stuff, you're not perceiving it and you're not aware that it's popping up. You're just rolling with it. On and then, point. yeah, and then physically, people are in denial, you know? <laughs> people are fat and won't accept that they're fat, you know? They're, they're not aware, on a deep level they're aware, but they won't make that awareness conscious. And once they create that conscious awareness, change is just, you know, it just flows out of it. It flows naturally out of it once you're consciously aware of things like that. Yeah. Uh... So, what I was going to say is this actually, what you were saying sort of leads into the next question for me, if that's okay. Or are you still going? I'm done. That's all I needed to say about that. <clears throat> we're still on the question. The science, though, on the last point about awareness, though, they, they've shown in study after study that basically a lot of people don't even realize. In fact, one of the examples that were given in this book was an office worker like saw a picture of a guy like on a bulletin board and he's like, wow, that guy's obese. <laughs> he takes a better look and it's him. <laughs> and our work environments actually, the people were around and I, I see it. Like just when I go out, I'm observing it like how like people don't think they're overweight because everybody around them is that size. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's that your awareness can be manipulated by your environment. Yeah. Is my caveat to what you said. So well, my, my caveat to that is that you go into the deeper levels of awareness. So you can transcend all the mental programming by going into the, the, the deeper awareness, the emotional awareness, the spiritual awareness. So you can see, you could be aware of those places where you are programmed. Mm -hmm and where you are influenced by that kind of conditioning. You can, but a lot of people find that very difficult. But it's, it's a good strategy to express to other people. Meditation, it's as simple as that. <laughs> that is a very, very good starting place, yeah. Good apps, calm and headspace to start. Headspace, yes. Headspace, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wish I had more discipline uh, to do that and stay committed to it like on a daily basis, but it's fantastic app for people that are trying to get into the idea of meditation. Oh, and I have a really easy technique for meditation and being aware of your thoughts in general. In general. You're the sky and your thoughts and emotions are merely clouds passing by. So once you have that perspective, it's so easy to just, whoop, oh, there goes anger. Whoop, there goes thoughts about my job. Whoop, there goes that. And you're just chilling from that deeper perspective being aware of what's going on instead of diving into the craziness. I think that is a very good, uh, I would say, well, what I'll call it is an additional strategy. Because I think if hypothetically some of the listeners haven't done any meditation ever, I think there's probably a little bit more to it than that, but that is a good like place to be in your head while you're trying to get into meditation. Is that what you're trying to get Be out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.